Laura, as an environmentalist, what's your reaction to Rishi Sunak's announcement today? Well, it's really disappointing that we are pushing back really critical climate actions. And so it's frustrating to see this. And it's really frustrating that some of the arguments just aren't holding up. You know, ultimately, these decisions will end up that regular people have to pay more through their energy costs, through transport costs. This is going to have a real impact on people as well as planet. And it's, I think, ultimately really disappointing that we continue to see delays and backtracking on climate commitments after we, the United Kingdom, hosted such an important climate conference, COP26, in Glasgow just a couple of years ago. So a very frustrating day, and it just shows how much work that we have to do to, to bring ourselves back at being a climate leader. Henry, it's clearly not gone down well within the Green lobby. How's it gone down within the Conservative Party? Well, it's another split in a Conservative Party which is now split along all sorts of different axes. On the one hand, you do have people who are deeply disappointed by Rishi Sunak's decision, uh, who were heavily involved in the decisions under, under Theresa May which brought the net zero commitment into legal force. On the other hand, there are a lot of Conservative MPs who have been deeply worried about some of the cost implications of these policies on their voters at a time when the Conservatives are a long way behind in the polls and heading into what will be a tricky general election. There are also some people, sort of the more policy people around the Prime Minister, who were just saying at some point this was some of this was probably going to happen because the national grid was just not going to be ready for any kind of mass transition of a lot of electric vehicles or boilers work that is currently done with fossil fuels in one form or another. The national grid was simply not going to be ready by 2030. So a decision like this at some point was inevitable. And, and Henry, has it all been done with an election in mind? You know, is it, you know, is it going to be a vote winner? It's definitely been done with the election in mind because what this means is that now, now that the government has deferred so many of these policies and Labour has committed to bringing them back, that means that those costs, the costs of those policies for ordinary, for ordinary voters and families are now Labour, costs of Labour policy and Rishi Sunak will be hoping to use that as a wedge issue in an election. Will it be a vote winner? I don't know. A lot of voters are very concerned about the climate and I think that it, 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 you, the voters, the polling I've seen suggests people are relatively split. But I think what Rishi and a lot of Conservative uh, pollsters will know is that when you get down to the nitty gritty, when you get beyond the headline commitments and it's like, do you want more electricity pylons in your area? Do you want a, a small modular nuclear power station built in your area? The answer from their voters is almost always no. Without that infrastructure, none of this was going to be possible. And that infrastructure is simply on current courses not going to get built. Uh, a lot of people say that they widely support uh, green policies. But do you think the support support is there uh, during a cost of living crisis? I think the support is there and what we also need to understand is the knock-on effects of this. To pick out one of the pledges that is being lost, for example, there was some regulations to help make homeowners and landlords make their buildings, their homes more energy efficient and this is going to be removed. So that means that particularly for landlords, they don't need to make their buildings energy efficient. What that ultimately means is that for many tenants, they're going to live in a building, in a home that is leaking out energy because it doesn't have double glazing, it doesn't have insulation. That's going to put more cost into their especially winter energy bills. And we also know that that has knock-on effects because we get damp, we get mould, we get leaks, and that is just really chipping away at the dignity. So, yes, we need to be looking at the economics of all of this, but we also need to recognise that pushing back a lot of the green agenda, if we call it that, will also yeah. put a strain yeah. on regular uh, everyday people during uh, a cost of living crisis. And Laura, Rishi Sunak says it won't affect um, reaching that target of 2050, the net zero um, emissions. You know, do you believe that? No, I don't. We were really scraping by by the skin of our teeth to meet that anyway on a trajectory with what we had. And now we've been scaling everything back. We are really going to struggle to get close to that. And listening to the full speech from Rishi Sunak, he said, here is our new plan. Scale back, scale back, scale back uh -huh. without much uh -huh. else put on the table. Um, Henry, what about the political management of, of all this? He wasn't supposed to be making a statement about about this until Friday, until until these leaks. I mean, what what have you made of made of the handling of it all? 
I mean, obviously, he has been on the back foot since those leagues. As you say, this was not the day he, he planned to make that announcement. He's never been a stellar public speaker. And so the idea of all of this coming down to a crunch speech, which as a result of all the controversy, was also sort of much more heavily amped up. And there was a lot more pressure on him than there might have been if this had been a regular policy announcement. So the handling has not been great. It's obviously, again, exposed divisions within the Conservative Party on this issue as well. I think what Downing Street will be hoping for is that once that clears, because let's face it, most voters don't really track who's saying what to who in WhatsApp groups, once that clears, what will remain is a clear dividing line with Labour on a suite of policies which, in the short term at least, they argue, would and, impose steep costs on people. And Henry, in a, sense, in, in a sentence, Gat, Zach Goldsmith said that there should be a snap general election. You don't see that happening, do you? Very briefly. No, not with the Conservative point, Party no. 20 points behind the polls. Of course not. OK, we'll have to leave it there. But Laura and Henry, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Thank you. Thank you.